bus stop is to his smile, his wit, and his incredible heart. It's to Doncaster and Huddersfield, but really about his beloved Mansfield town. It's to the king of field mill, he will always have that crown. It's to Sue, his rock, and the love of his life. It's to meeting in the pub, ever else, before surely becoming man and wife. It's to 450 appearances, unstoppable headers, 63 goals, and scoring at White Hart Lane. It's to scoring with 16 stitches in his leg, our man felt no pain. It's to holidays with dear friends in Barbados, Germany and Spain. It's to the Portland and Sherry's bar. The staff always knew his name. It's to a wonderful husband, dad, friend, godfather and beloved Ganga. It's to our Kevin Bird, a true gent and very special man. the eldest of four children, Karen, Catherine and Stephen. Sadly, Catherine died last year and Carol would like to pay tribute to her brother. Kevin, our big brother, you were the eldest of the four of us. Sadly, now you've gone. Dad's been gone 23 years. We lost our younger sister Catherine last year. It just leaves me and Stephen. And of course, our rock, Mum, aged 92. Growing up, all you wanted to do in life was play football. We are so happy and proud of you that you achieved this. Mansfield Town would get to have you. Mansfield Town was a massive part of your life, right up until you took it. And you wouldn't have wanted it any other way. You're always loving, kind, great fun, great cook, always wanting to feed us. You wouldn't have asked for a better brother. You'll leave a massive gap in our lives which can never be filled. Now you've been dead and Catherine, I'm sure, watching over us. Our family chain is broken, but I know one day the chain will link, will link us all again. The last few years have been so difficult, the most horrendous illness to live with. We just want to thank so
He was the oldest son of Kath and Eric Bird, and Kevin was the oldest of four children, Karen, Catherine and Stephen. As a child, Kevin was very reserved. He was mild-tempered, nice-natured and never got angry, something that might surprise those of you who played on the team against him. <coughs> when he was two years old, Kevin had a really bad accident. He fell over whilst playing outside and badly cut his stomach on a broken bottle. The accident was so serious that he very nearly didn't survive. Kevin had a very happy childhood and the birds had great family holidays where Kevin would always make new friends. Kevin's cousins lived close by and he spent a lot of time with them too during the school holidays. Kevin hated school. Kath would drop him off and by the time she'd returned home, Kevin had escaped and was sat on the doorstep waiting for her and she dragged him back on many an occasion. The only subject Kevin really liked was PE. He could play football and he was sports mad. Although when he began playing football for the school, his mum would have to go along and tie his bootlaces as he couldn't fasten them himself. <coughs> as Kevin got older, he started going out socialising with his friends, Billy Rushby and Paul Farrell. And after they'd been out for a drink, Kevin would go home and tell his mum tales, which she said she really didn't need to know about. <laughs> Kevin's first job was making fireplaces in Doncaster and he bought himself a scooter, which was held together by a wing and a prayer but he treated it like he'd bought a Rolls Royce. Kevin's footballing career began as an apprentice for Doncaster Rovers, but he's released in 1972 without making an appearance for the first team, something he regretted not being able to do. It was Frank Marshall who recommended that Kevin sign for Mansfield Town, initially on a trial basis, but he soon designated himself a full-time contract and his family were incredibly proud of him. Signing for the Stags, he was nervous about leaving home, but when he first moved to Mansfield, Kevin lodged with Wilf and Barbara Bingley, and they became like a second mum and dad to him. After he moved out of lodgings, Kevin married Pat, and the two lived together in Mansfield until they split. Eric was very proud of his son, and would go to his matches and loved every minute of watching his son play. Kevin loved his time at the Stags, and despite numerous teams trying to buy him, he'd always say no. Arthur Patrick would call him to the office and say, this team wants to buy you, do you want to go? And Kevin would say, do you want me to go? And Arthur would say, no. And Kevin would say, well, I don't want to go either. And that would be that, he'd stay. Kevin was an instrumental part of the Stags team, and his teammates have many fond memories of him. We'll hear from Mick Laverick in a bit, but Joe Jimmy McCaffrey and Paul Matthews have both said the same thing about Kevin. They were both slightly built and not as tall as Kevin, so the opposition centre-half would try and kick them. But Kevin would make sure that they got a kick back. Paul said even though he played for several clubs, he never had the same sort of protection from any other player. There was one occasion where Kevin had been injured for three months with a torn thigh muscle. And just before the Stags were meant to be playing Tottenham, Kevin was enjoying a few pints in the pub when Gordon Hodgson fetched him and told him he was playing as Sandy Pate had got the flu. Kevin had only trained once before the match, but he still put in a great performance. He also only got sent off twice in his career. Once was at Barnsley, when one of their fans spat in his face whilst he was taking a throw-in, so Kevin jumped over the barrier and knocked him out. <laughs> Quite deserved, I <laughs> Kevin played in the number six amber and blue shirt for 11 seasons, 450 first team games. He scored 63 goals and helped us win the Division 4 title in the 74-75 season and the Division, type, Division 3 title two years later. But Kevin's time at Mansell Town led to him winning a far greater prize, and that was his wife Sue. The two met in 1977 at the Plough in Mansfield. Sue had gone for a drink with her friend Jan, who knew the Stags players that were in there drinking, <coughs> so they ended up sat chatting. Sue didn't really pay Kevin any attention, but later that night, Jan phoned and told Sue that they were meeting the Stags players in the railway in Kirkby. Sue wasn't really bothered, but Jan persuaded her to go along. <coughs> As Sue made her way to the bar to get a drink, Kevin followed her and asked what she was doing. So she told him. Kev said that Elaine didn't buy a drink in his presence, and he bought the drinks, and they got chatting. Kevin asked Sue if she'd like to go on another date, and Sue agreed. But she said she wasn't really that keen on dating a footballer, but she went along anyway, and they met in the Byron after a match. Gordon Hodgson dropped Kevin off. After that, they'd try and meet in secret out of the area, but everywhere they went, someone knew Kev. 
That continued their whole lives, even when they were on holiday. <coughs> In 1980, Sue and Kevin became parents to Sarah and Charlotte. Uh, sorry, in 1980, Sue and Kevin became parents to Sarah, and Charlotte followed three years later. Kevin was over the moon to have two daughters. Kevin and Sue married in October 1986 at Mansfield Registry Office. <coughs> Kev's family were everything to him, and he loved being a dad. Although as teenagers, neither Sarah or Charlotte could get away with anything, as someone would always report back to their dad. Kevin watched Sarah play football and go running at Berry Hill, and he taught both Sarah and Charlotte to swim whilst they were on holiday. The birds had some amazing family holidays, visiting many places, although Benidorm was an absolute must, and they'd go a couple of times a year, and they'd always visit Jeff and Carol whilst they were there. Kevin loved cooking for his family and could make anything, a fabulous steak, seafood, a Sunday dinner, a Spanish omelette, you name it, Kev could rustle it up and for his 50th birthday, his family bought him a hostess trolley. <laughs> Kevin also grew to love gardening, mainly because when he, Sue, he and Sue moved to their house on Old Mill Lane, their garden became so overgrown that Sue got a company in to cut the lawn. She then sent Kev the bill. After that, he became a bit more interested and loved pottering about in his greenhouse. Sport was always on the television at home. Kevin loved any sport. He went to watch the cricket in Barbados in Australia, and he loved going to watch the Carl Frock fight uh, when he fought George Groves with Laurie. <coughs> Kevin loved golf, and even after his diagnosis with dementia, <coughs> Peter Kemp and Jeremy Booth would pick him up and take him for a game, although they'd have to make Kevin play with a different coloured ball, as Kev would nick theirs. <laughs> He'd also go with Keith Baisley to watch the Stags reserve team play. As well as playing football, all Kevin wanted out of life was to be a husband, a dad and a granddad. And he was so proud of his family and he loved them so much. Anyone that's ever bumped into Kevin in the pub will know that he was happy to sit and chat football with anyone over a pint. He loved socialising with his friends and the Stags fans. On the pitch, Kevin was feisty and took no nonsense, living by the motto, if I can't beat them, I'll break their legs. <laughs> And it was always best to give him just a little time after a match to decompress. Off the pitch, Kevin was loving, kind and caring. And he'd give you his less pound if you needed it. At the beginning, when I used the words hero and legend, I didn't use those terms lightly. Kevin Bird was, and he will remain, a legend and a hero. I'd like to invite Kevin's teammate, Mick Laverick, to pay his tribute to Kevin. <clears throat> well, can I just say, before I start, I haven't written anything down, so I sat and thought about what can I say about a true legend, and that I don't, you just, you, you pinch my, Sorry. you know, so, I'll just talk about um, my experiences with probably the best friend I made in football. Um, we started at Mansfield at Stags, 1972-73. I'd been there for a couple of years as a kid. Kev came from Doncaster, as has already been said. Um, and from then on, a friendship began that never ended. Even when I moved away, um, we stayed in touch with each other. Um, Kev was, uh, he was more than a teammate to me. I socialised with him. We went on holiday together. Um, families spent time with, with, each, with each other. Um, and then along came Gordon Hodgson. And that was when my career was cut short by about 10 years, going out with these two. <laughs> absolute, absolute legends, both of them. And, and I don't use that term, I don't like that word because I think it's been devalued um, over the last few years but in this case this guy I'm telling you I cannot tell you how good he was um, as a player um, but as a friend as a man um, he was a warrior off the field it might surprise a few people when I say he was a man of few words <coughs> no big time Charlie with Kev Bird um, it, it, what, what you see on the tin is what you get. That was Kev. Um, he was 
he was a guy who I don't really know where to start because he looked after me. He was he, he took me under his wing, um, looked after me. He he was somebody who off the field um, he was he was fairly. I think he was he was a quiet, no nonsense guy who didn't say a great deal, um, but he had your back all the time. He was he was there he was there certainly there for me in the for, for, uh, for the years of, of, of my career, um, and even when we we moved away from each other, um, it, it was always we still kept in touch, um, and I'll never forget. I'll never forget how he looked after me. It's been said about how he, he, he reacted on the field. I want to tell you something. If I had to play against him, I would want a paramedic pretty close. <laughs> because this guy, this guy was unbelievable. He was hard, but he was very, very fair, Kev. Um, and he was a different animal. When he put that yellow shirt on and ran down the tunnel, that was a different guy who you'd been sat in the pub with um, the night before. He was a leader, a true leader. <coughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. We are talking about the 70s, aren't we? Yeah. 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 One room for a meal. Um, but yeah we, yeah, we spent so much time together in uh, uh, Kev, myself, and, and Gordon Hudson. Um, we're, we're, Stuck like glue together for, for a long time. Uh, so, unfortunately, now I've lost two of the best mates I had in football. Um, and I'll never forget them. Um, for Sue and his family, um, I, I know personally what Sue's been through for the last eight or nine years. <coughs> and, and she's been absolutely unbelievable. Um, and the support he's had from, from the girls and the rest of the family as well. Uh, I take my hat off to her. She's, uh, I, I don't know how she's done it. Um, but she looked after Kev um, through terrible times through COVID and before. Um, so Sue, you know, I don't want to upset you, but um, I, can't, I can't stress um, how fantastic you've been. Um, and I would be proud of you. So, um, I'm not going to go into anything, I'm not going to tell any stories about them and that because what's, you know, what happens in Benny Domesdays and Benny Domesdays. <laughs> um, he's a guy who, you'll never see the likes of this fella again in Mansfield Town. There, there will be nobody who can take over this guy's mind as a legend. He was absolutely unbelievable. Um, so I just want to say to him, Kev, rest in peace, my friend. This is horrible, horrible disease. Can, I can't destroy you anymore. Rest in peace. Sending love for myself, the teammates, all the guys who were here. Um, and on behalf of myself and everybody else, I'm going to send love to you, Sue, and all the family. Yeah, um, and we're here to support you today um, to a true legend. Okay, thank you. years, Kevin has spent many years in Benidorm, and it was there that he met his friend Jeff Prentice, and Jeff's going to share with you what Kevin meant to him. Well, I think we've pinched each other's lines here, because <laughs> what, what you've just said, and what Katie said, we've all said the same things. Because I met Kevin when Manfield Town got promoted in 76, 77 season and they all came in Shelley's Bar as a treat for Mansfield Town and that season after he got sent off twice and I didn't really know him then until he came back with Sue the following year and we've been friends ever since. 
fantastic person and a great friend. Uh, he was 23 when I met him, same age as me, he's been a friend ever since. A couple of weeks ago, an old couple came in Sherry's bar with the Mansfield Town shirt on. I said, oh, I'll be in Mansfield in a couple of weeks to Kevin Bird's funeral. He went, got a tattoo with Mansfield Town. I've been Mansfield Town supporter since, it was, since I first came to a match. He was eight years old. And he said, Kevin Bird, eyes of blue, six foot two. <laughs> Kevin's after you. <laughs> and we had a crowd from Mansfield on a stag do. Mansfield Town shirts on. I said, look, my friend used to play for you, Kevin Bird. What did they sing? Eyes of blue, six foot two, Kevin Bird's after you. <laughs> This gentleman who I met had the pleasure, he won a prize and he had the pleasure of sitting all the old, old, old players of Mansfield Town years ago and he said what a gentleman Kevin was and a fantastic player. Today I experienced the most unbelievable thing driving past Mansfield Town with all the players, flares, blue and yellow flares going up and clapping in, what fantastic. Really, really brought emotion. Trying to find out a bit after you were saying that. But Kevin, when I met Kevin over the years, when I came back to Nottingham, Kevin and Sue would always meet up with me for where I'm from Chill and Beeston and there'd be other friends with Ray and Jean from, from Beeston as well. We all met up with Sue and um, uh, yeah. we all used to meet every year we used to have some laughs. I mean, and also I remember Kevin. Um, They'd go out on a, on a Friday night with a lot of the players into Nottingham, two or three o'clock in the morning, have a few drinks, playing in the next day. And he turned around to some of the players, how are you feeling, Kevin? He said, rough, how, how are you feeling? And they used to make it, like, we'll take like the centre forward after about ten minutes, put him out of the game. <coughs> put the icing on the cake for me, tribute to Kevin when they had the Dementia charity match at Manfield Town and I was selected to be his assistant. The, the uh, legends, Mansfield legends and soap, soap stars off the television and I walked out with Sue and Kevin, me and it was a fantastic tribute. Um, and while I was there on, on the side of the line, Kevin said, what are we doing here? <laughs> That's dementia. He says, well, you're the manager, I'm your assistant manager. And it, it, that's, that's the terrible thing. My parents both had dementia. And they knew Kevin as well. But he, we don't know which way it goes. It takes the personality away what the person was. But we must remember, Kevin was a fantastic man, a gentleman, a great footballer, and a credit to all his family and friends. It's just nice here to see how so many people that's come to pay tribute to him today. So all I can say for me and Carl, God bless Kevin, and thanks for the memorable time with that. As we've heard, Kevin was one of Mansell Town's greatest players. But I'd like to invite Mansell Town's chairman and owner John Radford to pay his tribute to Kevin. On behalf of myself, Carolyn, and everyone at Mansell Town Football Club, I offer my heartfelt condolences. To school and family in this difficult time. I hope that the outpouring of messages 
and memories expressed by so many former players, colleagues and supporters in recent weeks has been some comfort. It was with profound sadness that we learned of Kevin's passing. His family has lost a beloved husband, father, brother, brother-in-law and godfather. And Manfield Town Football Club have lost one of the greatest ever players. The word legend is an overused term nowadays, and in Ke but in Kevin's case, it simply doesn't do him justice. He was the epitome of what every professional footballer should be. A man of loyalty, dedication, perseverance and high standards. These qualities and more were evident every time he pulled on an Amber jersey. I, like so many of you here today, was privileged to watch Kevin in the terraces as a supporter. His full-blooded display as a commanding, no-nonsense defender will live forever in the memories of so many Stags fans. And equally, his exploits in the opposing penalty area were impressive, scoring 63 goals in 11 seasons, the highest any defender has achieved in the club's history. Over 1,600 players have represented the Stags since the club formed. And the truth is, many come and go. Some are well remembered, but few are considered great. Kevin is one of those few. His service to the Stags will never be forgotten. His name is etched into our club's history books as one of the club's finest ever players. Such was his legacy left on the field that the hospitality suite of the stadium was named in his honour. Off the pitch, I was privileged to get to know Kevin. The support he and Sue offered to myself and Karen was unwavering as it was considered encouraging, as it was encouraging. I was pleased to get to know the true gentleman, a man of integrity, loyalty and values. As a club, we'll be forever grateful for Kevin's service and contribution. A great club man whose time at the Stags brought so much joy to so many. And although today we join Kevin's family in mourning their loss, let us too remember the fondness of the life well lived much admired, really equal, and forever remembered. There's only one getting there. Thank you. 
true gentleman. If you're able, I'd like to invite you to stand while we say our final goodbyes to Kevin and join me in the Lord's Prayer. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We have been remembering with affection and gratitude the life of Kevin, a man who was kind, caring and loving. So in sorrow, but with deep love and affection, we commit Kevin's body to its end, to be transformed into the ultimate elements of the universe. Rejoice that you were lucky enough to have Kevin in your life and treasure the many memories that you shared with him. We've been recollecting with love, respect and affection Kevin's life. But let us now return to live in our own lives with these memories of him, which I know you will cherish, and with a renewed determination to live our own lives more fully and to make him proud. Kevin, go safely, go with love in your heart, and may you forever be at peace. On behalf of Kevin's family, I'd like to thank you for joining us for this celebration of Kevin's life and for the warmth and support that you have shown them. They really appreciate the many messages of support and love and the memories that you've shared with them. They'd like to extend particular thanks to Mansell Town Football Club, to John and Carolyn Radford, to Paul and Della Brown, and the directors and staff for their unwavering support, not just today, but for always celebrating just what Kevin has meant and will continue to mean to Mansfield Town. Thank you for the love and the friendship that you have shown each other. Whether you are here today, whether you are at the One Call Stadium, whether you are outside, or whether you've joined us online. Kevin's family have asked for donations to the Jeff Astle Foundation and there'll be a donation box on your way out, or you can donate online, and you'll find the link on the back of your order of service. They'd also like it if you could join them afterwards at the One Call Stadium. Take care of yourselves and of each other, and stay safe. And I'll leave you with a song that Kevin loved. And when Kevin's family are ready, they want to play some roses on the coffin. <coughs> Just one.